Good evening. This is March 22nd, 2023. This is the second uh, public hearing on the budget, um, the 23-24 the, uh, budget. And uh, Ms. Hastings, would you call attendance, please? Mr. Richards. Here. Ms. Walsh. Here. Ms. Higgins. Mr. Weinberg. Here. Ms. Cotton. Here. Ms. Robinson. Here. Ms. Meeker. Here. Mr. Kirk. Here. We have a quorum. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Hastings. And um, with that, uh, before we get into the any public comment, um, Mr. Dunn, do you have a uh, informative presentation? I have a very short presentation for you tonight. Part two of uh, Monday night. That will move quickly. Duplicative. All right. Copy of this presentation is in your shared folder and posted on the website. Tonight we'll talk about the budget goals, the work sessions to date, budget overview, the posted budget, tax rate estimate, estimated and history, school nutrition services budget, the estimate for federal grants, state adequacy, where you can find all the information on the budget, and then open for public comment. So budget goals, priority one was equity and diversity. Priority two, curriculum instruction and assessment. Priority three was social emotional learning. And priority four, communication. Priority five was facilities. And priority six, safety. These were the six components that was part of the strategic plan that uh, the, the district has passed. So work sessions year to date. Uh, so far we have had 10 work sessions. This is work session 11. We'll have a work session on Monday and one on Wednesday. The overview right now, uh, this is the initial budget that was proposed on uh, February 8th. As part of that budget, these were the positions that were due to be either reduced through attrition or reductions in force or po new positions that were going to be added. That total was about $1.2 million. We also had in the directed service to add a resource officer at Runlet that has been removed by the board. So that brings the budget down to 100,870,000 or 2.35% increase in expenditures or 2.29 increase in revenue. On the March 9th, you posted a budget and had looked for some options. You chose the fourth option on this sheet, which was to reduce the budget by 2.15%, which would increase the local tax rate by 35 cents, or 2.61%. Those reductions included refinancing of technology, transfer from the technology trust fund, moving the three proposed math coaches to Title II with, as a one-year only that would end on June of 24 taking a portion of the new com communications person, public information officer, and putting 40% into Perkins, and financing through the Extraordinary Needs Grant for one year to District OT, Abbott Downing Preschool Teacher, the DEIJ, and then we would reduce a position at the high school in return for the uh, assistant principal position, and then we would take additional revenue from the health risk reserve to get you to the 2.15 million, and this would keep all the positions that were um, listed in the prior slides. So that would bring you to a budget that would increase by about 1.39% for a total expenditure of $99,932,444 and revenue increase of 1.32%. So here are some tax history from the City of Concord's website. Uh, as you see, we're looking at about 13 dollars and 77 cents it's about 35 cent increase and a dollar 44 for the state education tax um, which is up 23 cents this history goes back to 2000 as i mentioned that the budget reduction of 2.15 million would add an estimated impact on a 300 thousand dollar home of about 105 dollars the state portion would add $69 for a total of 
Again, this is based on an average home being $300,000. The school nutrition budget, which is a, it's, its own uh, fund and is required under um, federal law to be self-sufficient, that is about $2.3 million with revenue of $2.3 million. And our estimates for federal grants is about $3.7 million. These are just the entitlement grants. This does not, this does not count any competitive grants that we compete for, um, including 21C, McKinney-Vinto, Robotics, ESSER, or any other. State adequacy, um, as we mentioned, the, the, based on the governor's budget, um, they're making some adjustments to the formula. The bottom line, if the governor's budget was uh, passed as recommended, Concord could see a potential $3.2 million in adequacy over the biannual, 1.374 for next year. I do know that House Finance Division, as I've been listening, have been looking to add 20 to 40 million on the right side of that formula. So all that appears that the number could potentially be higher than that. Um, I'm waiting to see once they publish the documents of what they've approved. Again, upcoming work sessions. You have your upcoming open work session on Monday, if you choose to have that. And then on Wednesday, March 29th, we would look for you to finalize your preliminary budget. Again, you have the opportunity to touch the budget again in October uh, when, we, when the assessments come in and we finalize the tax rate. The big difference between now and October, although you'll know more in October than you do now, especially with a biannual budget that's not passed by the state yet, you will pass a budget on Wednesday needing only five votes in the affirmative. To make your adjustments to the budget, you need seven in October to make the change. Uh, all the information is posted on the website, including the detail uh, of the budget that's posted, all the presentations and videos. And this is a list of all the board members and how you can contact them. And that. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Dunn. Um, unless someone has a question for Mr. Dunn, and I do not see any, we will proceed to the public comment portion um, of our meeting tonight. Uh, anyone wishing to make a co public uh, comment on the budget is free to step in, sign in, please. And uh, I will. Only call, I will uh, just inform you that uh, we do this in accordance with our policy, so uh, please no uh, personally identifiable information on any students or teachers. And um, with that, good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank the board for all their hard work on the budget. Once again, every year you guys work tirelessly to try and keep the tax rate reasonable. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about uh, the math co coach positions that are reduced in the current budget, I believe, to three positions. Um, I found out recently that we have, I think, 18 one-year-only positions in the district that are not going to be funded next year. Some of those are in math coach positions. Uh, some of those are legitimate leave of absences, but some of them are grant funded in other uh, funded positions that are not going to be here. Uh, I hate to use the term boots on the ground that are going to be missing next year. Um, I know that uh, Kathleen was well, uh, nice enough to sit down with me and explain a lot of the administrative positions that have been added recently in the district at central office and said that most of those positions did not come out of the budget. Is that true? Is that what you told me. And I guess my question would be, if, it, if those positions did not come out of the budget and the money that's funding those positions disappears, are you going to cut those positions? But, I mean, I think we really need to realize that kids are still hurting from COVID. We need as many people working directly with kids as possible. I know the math coach in my building is working with students every day in classrooms, groups of kids on the carpet, working tirelessly. She's also really effective at organizing our Tighter One tutors so that they're more effective. So I think, you're, I think it's gonna be an impossible position to try and have two buildings for one person. It's just not gonna work. 
uh, I think you need to have at least five positions at the elementary school to be effective. Uh, we know the test scores are down in math. We, we, there's a lot of reasons for that. But if we don't do anything different, it's going to be the same outcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. See how it's nice to and, and you were very brief, Mr. Mackey. Thank you. Um, so, uh, is there any other public comment? Not seeing any, I will uh, close the public comment portion of the meeting. The superintendent, do we have any other business for the board this evening? No, we don't, sir. Okay. Board members, is there any new business that you would like to bring up? Not seeing any, I would like to thank everyone for being here and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Ms. Robinson. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Weinberg. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We are adjourned, thank you everyone.